Good morning and thank you for visiting my channel at Stampin' with Teresa. My name is Teresa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I wanted to show you this uh, beautiful ornament that I made. Um, this I made this for a, a Secret Santa project actually and it was really simple um, but it does take several steps because you use Mod Podge um, to kind of glue this down. But basically what I did was I started with a wood ornament that I purchased from Michaels. Um, you could get at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, anywhere. Um, they all have wood ornaments. Um, but I bought a bunch of these that were on clearance after Christmas last year. So they're originally $2, but I think I bought these for $0.50 cents each. And I know they have these in the store. So I actually used the stag head um, for this particular ornament. But as you can see, they, there's gingerbread men. Here's a snowman, um, there was sleds, here's a present, um, there's Christmas trees, so there's all kinds of shapes that you can use, hearts, um, but again I chose the stag head because I have a thing for stag heads and I have a thing for plaid. So this year when um, Stampin' Up! released the wrapped in plaid designer series paper, um, you can see that I've gone through this. I only have a few sheets left of the full size. But let me set this aside for a minute and I'm not gonna make the, the ornament, but I'll just give you a quick idea of what I did. So let's pretend like we're using the, um, the uh, present. So what I did was I flipped it over so the side that I wanted to show up on the actual ornament, I put upside down. This is actually cute too, so they both work really well. Um, and then I would, just decided to trace around trace around the ornament using a pencil and so you just like you know just trace and then you would come out and then once you cut it out you know fussy cut it and then you turn it around and boom you've got a piece that perfectly fits the ornament and then what I did was I used Mod Podge I used just a old cheapo paintbrush and um, you can see that the bristles are perfectly soft and beautiful um, even after using Mod Podge. I washed it with just basic soap and water after uh, right away after using the Mod Podge. Um, the one thing about cheap paintbrushes though you want to be careful of is that the bristles can tend to come out so I just kind of give it a pull to take any loose bristles out because I really don't like um, leaving bristle marks on my project. But this paintbrush is a multi-use. I also use it with um, my um, hot glue gun to hold things down <laughs> when I'm like things that are you'll see in a minute but I'll hold it down and so there's lots of hot glue on the end. So this is a utility paintbrush that is just used for projects. So here's the Mod Podge. So you open up the Mod Podge and you paint it on the wood first. I felt no need to prime it otherwise. It's already got whitewash on it. Um, I was a little nervous about it, but it worked out just fine. So I painted it all on. Then I took the paper while it was still wet, and then I liberally dipped in there and then glazed it on, you know, um, the top to just to fully glue it down. And, um, and then I just let it dry overnight. So once it's dry, it gives you this beautiful, beautiful, glossy finish on here. And it's the paper is stuck on. See how it looks from the other side? It is, it is stuck on. Um, now, because I traced around it, it leaves like maybe like a, a, just a fraction of a millimeter of paper hanging over the edge. I didn't mind and because I knew I was going to be lining the edges with this glitter. And the glitter I used is actually in um, the uh, current catalog. Um, hold on, my alarm system's trying to go off on me. Um, the, uh, the ice stamp and glitter that's in the current holiday catalog. Um, so I just used this, I painted on the Mod Podge, you know, after the first layer was dry. And you can do multiple layers if you want, um, you know, whatever you think you need for your ornament. I only did one layer on this one. I loved how it looked. So I just painted on the Mod Podge on the edge of the ornament and then just sprinkled the glitter and then let it fall into the coffee filter. And then I just cleaned it up 
when I was done. So that was that. And then I had to let that dry for a while. I think I let that go for all day while I was at work. Um, and I came home and um, there was a few spots. I had set it to dry at an easel. So actually this took a few uh, passes because I did the top first and I sat it in a little easel so it could dry. And then I flipped it over and did the other parts. And then after it was all dry, I did touch up some sections and let that dry again. So it is. this is not something that you can do quickly in an hour you know this is something that takes a little bit of planning and it took me a couple days to get it fully complete which was very difficult for me because I love making cards and tags and whatnot because it's totally instant gratification right <laughs> so while that was drying drying though I was planning out what I wanted I love the look of the stags with the flower clusters along their their base of their horns or antlers um, so I was like, well, gosh, what do I have that could work really well with this? Well, oops. Ooh, sorry. I didn't mean to move that computer. One thing I used was the sprig punch. Let's see if we can move that along. Sorry about the glare with my light, you guys. Um, I also used dies from the Cup of Cheer die set. This is in the current holiday catalog. This is in the annual catalog. In the Cup of Cheer dies, I used this actually and this is the main poinsettia in the center here and I put it through the gold foil paper and then I just trimmed this out and it was a little funky the way it left some of the insides but I knew I was going to cluster it with some flowers and then I also used this guy to cut out a few um, little sprigs that are kind of little filler sprigs. I also used the frosted frames dies and I used this die right here to get these main sprigs that kind of came out in the end and so these printed or printed cut out perfectly so I just kind of met them in the center with the gold paper and then you know just arranged my other foliage um, the way I wanted it and I did it ahead of time and glued good chunks of the pieces together ahead of time. Now the flowers, what I did was I used a retired punch set actually, but you could get little tiny flower punches anywhere. Um, and I've got them through the years from Stampin' Up. Um, I know they're retired and I wish that they had other tiny little flower punches. These are so useful. Um, and I just didn't have any dyes. I would have tried to use current product that I had, but I just don't have anything with little flowers like that. So I just kind of I actually uh, punched them all out of white paper and then I used real red and cherry cobbler to sponge on the color because I didn't I wanted everything to appear white from behind so except I get you can see a little bit of the green sprig right there but I basically wanted everything to appear white from behind so I uh, sponged the flowers on. I really love how it looked. Um, and then I actually sponged, I did the the sprigs in shaded spruce and I sponged it with shaded spruce to give it a little more dimension as well. Um, for the sentiment, what I did was I heat embossed with using our gold embossing powder. And I just, you know, uh, when you trim a bunch of white paper, you always get little strips left over. I save those. So I just uh, did it on a, a strip that used that sentiment from the cup of Christmas. So I used this Merry Christmas sentiment there. And then I just gave it, I just hand trimmed little dovetail things, the fishtail, whatever you call that in there. And then to accent the flowers, um, these punched out like an individual flowers. So I just glued them in like things of two. And then I have one that's just one here. And then I used the gold glitter enamel dots for the centers of the flowers and those gold glitter enamel dots are part of the uh, rose suite that features the Christmas rose and that beautiful rose paper. I think it's called Christmas Time is Here and you can buy the, the gold uh, dots separately if you want. Um, anyway, but that's currently available on stampinup.com website. And then um, for the the tie, the tie, the hanger, I used the curly ribbon that's in the current uh, holiday catalog as well. 
So there is kind of the, the what I used, a little bit of the process, and all I knew from the beginning was that I had that stag ornament, and I really wanted to make a plaid deer head, and... Um, you know, give it some floral clusters and just make it look like a really traditional and beautiful Christmas ornament. I absolutely love how this came out. And I know that I made this for a, a gift. Oh, by the way, I hot glued the ribbon on the back. So just to like let you know, I used hot glue and I actually used hot glue on the cluster as well. Um, because I really wanted it to stick against this Mod Podge. I wasn't, I didn't, I figured glue dots would be okay, but because it's slick, I just really wanted to use uh, hot glue. And I did give it dimension using some dimensionals, but again, I glued everything down onto this using my hot glue gun. You can get a hot glue gun for very inexpensive at any craft store. And, um, you know, so that's, that's that. Um, anyway, I really love how this project turned out. I want to keep it for myself, but I'm, I won't. I'll be good. I'll give it away. Um, but I, since I have so many others, uh, I think I'll probably make a couple others. But because of the labor intensiveness of it, I think I would do it in batches, actually. Um, I don't know that I would do just one ornament at a time again, you know, so... Um, I would just start off with my wood ornaments, cut all the pieces, and then do all the Mod Podge at one time, and then go wash my brush right away, um, and then come back, and if I wanted to add glitter accents or whatever, um, you know, I could do that too. So anyway, I just really wanted to show you this, and um, if you like this video and like this project and want to see more of this sort of thing, please click the thumbs up button. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And if you hit the bell, you can get notifications every time I post. Um, starting the first of the year, I'm going to be posting on a very regular schedule. Um, it's a little hectic this time of year, but um, I've got a couple videos coming out this week, including this one. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Stampin' with Teresa for both. So, and Teresa spelled with an H. So, Stampin' with Teresa, T H E R E S A. Thank you so much, you guys. Have a wonderful day.